Hello everyone, and welcome to another Company Heroes 2 replay cast. My name is ATR, and today we're going to have ourselves a 1v1 in Crossing in the Woods. Our heroes today are going to be Japer, playing for the Soviets, and his opponent is going to be Soldier of War, or actually Soldier for War, so he's pro-war, um, playing for the Germans. And uh, yeah. Right off the bat, we see both players going for their doctrines. Uh, we see Soldier for War getting the Elite Troops Doctrine. You can see it right there. Or up here. And we also have Japer having the Soviet Shock Army already selected. So both players already with a specific mindset and what they want to do. Uh, doctrine, I'm not Doctrine. Uh, Bulletin-wise, we see that uh, Japer is going for the buffing on infantry. He's got 3% accuracy for conscripts, the 3% accuracy on shock troops, and 10% less suppression on shock troops. So considering his doctrine that he already has, you know, shock troops available, well, yeah, he has something specifically in mind, and we're probably going to see multiple shock troops on the field. And uh, for Soldier for War, we have 3% accuracy for Grenadiers, 3% accuracy... Wait, is that the same one? Oh, wait, 3% reload for Grenadiers, 3% accuracy, and then we also have the half-track having... Hmm. 5% increased armor penetration? How does that work? Oh, well. Apparently, the half-track is going to have more penetration, so we'll probably see some half-tracks being used. Anyways, uh, so far, we have Tier 1 going down for Soldier of War. Soldier 4 War. That's kind of hard to say. Um... And uh, getting tier 1 and 4 Grenadiers in a row, so no MG42s, just straight up Grenadiers. And Japer not going for any um, tech, just, excuse me, just getting uh, conscripts as you would expect. Probably going to be dumping into Molotovs. Mm, yeah, Molotovs already selected, and then a fourth conscript squad after that. So yeah, 3 conscripts into Molotovs, then more conscripts to follow, so not bad. So small engagement over here on the left-hand side. Grenadiers cross the river, run into a conscript squad and a combat engineer squad, take some shots, and then decide to back off and get into the heavy cover of their own sandbags on their side of the river. Combat engineers will move forward, start getting shot at by the grenadiers. The grenadiers will do some damage to them. Conscripts are nearby to help out, but there's a second grenadier coming down with another conscript squad across the river. And a third Grenadier Squad moving in, so the Soviets will actually lose this fight very easily as a fourth Grenadier Squad moves into the zone. Thankfully, or well, a nice thing for Japet is that the right side flank is almost completely open. We see a Pio Squad over on the far right hand side getting engaged by a Conscript, so they will win that very easily. Conscripts end up retreating down to two men. The other Conscript Squad is now at four, getting besieged on all sides. Grenadiers move in to deny the capping of the victory point. Molotov flies by the Conscript, but they will have to retreat. And there they go. On the far right-hand side, the Pios do manage to capture that fuel while these Conscripts capture the, the victory point. And the Conscripts are now going to run straight into the Pios, and the Pios will have to retreat. So a very strong push on the left-hand side for Soldier for War. A lot of Grenadiers, even LMGs equipped now on the Grenadiers, so he's going to be investing in those quite heavily. And we'll probably see the half-track behind these Grenadiers to boost their efficiency and keep them on the field longer. Another Conscript Squad running into two of the Grenadiers, one with an LMG. The LMG squad on its own could deal with this Conscript Squad with another con Grenadier there for support. Well, it's just easy pickings. Grenadiers run down the road, chasing down the Conscript Squad. They get themselves into heavy cover. Conscripts throw a Molotov, doing quite a bit of damage to the Grenz, but they end up having to retreat, and the Grenz only lose health. Down to less than half health on the squad, but still at four men, so full firepower is still available. Conscripts now retreating. Conscripts all back at base. One squad is fully reinforced, not heading out just yet. Probably going to wait for more troops to head out with them. And we have Tier 2 going down for Soldier for War. Tier 2 going down as well for Japer, so he's probably going to be getting, I would assume, a Maxim machine gun, considering the sheer amount of Grenadiers that he has seen. That would, well, benefit him quite heavily and allow him to control those Grenz and not let them run rampant. Up in the north, Conscript Squad did manage to push away the Pios, since they are, well, obviously back at base, building Tier 2, and have since captured the 
fuel and going for that little strategic point that isn't connecting anything. Never. Same over here. This little point here just connects this little zone and it's on its own, but whatever. It's more resources, so it's fine. So left hand side, Grenz just spattered all over the place. Grenz squad captured the victory point. And the center point has, as of yet, been actually seen. Nobody has actually gone for it at this point, so. We have a little bit of a standoffish situation here by both players. Conscripts just lining the uh, cover across the road. One Conscript squad pushes forward into the tree. Gonna run into three Grand Squads with a fourth one there for backup. Conscripts just getting mauled by two LMGs. More Conscript squad move in, trying to get on top of the Grands. This squad is taking quite a beating down to three men. Grand Squad loses one more man over here, forces it to back off a little bit. Loses one more man as it moves out of the way. But we now have the... No, actually, we still don't have the half track. Never mind. I would have assumed, but one shouldn't assume. Maxim Machine Gun moves in, opens up on the Grenadiers on the left-hand side, getting a suppression on the men on the heavy cover. Conscripts are able to Ura forward, gonna get right on top of that Grand Squad. They manage to force it away, simply by being in their presence. And the LMGs are supporting from the rear. The uh, one-man Grenadier Squad did end up retreating. And the Maxim Machine Gun continues to push forward, managing to break this uh, stalemate here on this side of the map. Far north, conscripts capturing that point, not daring to go into the center of the road just yet. As the conscripts down south hold the line as the Maxim Machine Gun opens up on the Grenz, forcing a full route of the German forces, getting them out of the field very quickly. Nothing being built so far for Soldier for War, not exactly sure why. He has a lot of manpower, using it right now to reinforce. Uh, he's at about 300, but. Not exactly sure. Well, we will see. Uh, can I actually check this? No. For some reason, it doesn't work all the time. So I wasn't able to actually get the uh, the ranks here specifically. So, yeah, I mean, we can almost guarantee that this isn't top 100 play, but, uh, yeah, whatever. Anyways, Chalk Troops now on the field for Japer, being used to cap right now. Just moving along with the uh, Maxim Machine Gun and some Conscripts for support. Center map, Conscripts do go for the cap. These are the conscripts that were up north. They managed to cap this point, I think. Getting recapped right now by Soldier for War. Soldier for War pushing with all his grants into the center. We have the Pios getting a fuel point. And Tier 3 has gone down from Soldier for War, so he's not going to be getting that half-track. It looks like he's going to be skipping straight into tanks. Not entirely sure I agree with that, considering the sheer amount of Grenadiers he has. A so half-track supporting these would break Japet very quickly. I mean, he really wouldn't have much of a chance to do anything here. He would have to produce, at the very least, an AT gun to try to hold off that half-track, otherwise it would just roll through all this infantry. Conscripts trying to hold the bridge with the uh, heavy cover here of these makeshift trenches or bunkers. But a nasty rifle nade lands on them, hitting them down to three men, forcing them away. Maxim Machine Gun on the other side could actually get into that, uh, that, um, Watchtower, but doesn't really. It is called the Sniper's Nest that says provides a vantage point for snipers, but um, not exactly sure how it functions on that. Is it just increased sight or does it actually increase the range? Well, anyways, Grenadiers move away. Grenadiers in the center capture the point. Left hand side, Conscripts capturing the victory point while Shock Troops go for the fuel. And we see Grenadiers just capturing around. Nothing really much happening. Yeah, more shock troops coming onto the field for Japer. So yeah, as we assumed, he was going to be getting more than one shock troop squad. Hits straight into the heavy cover of that little trench there. It's not really a trench, so I shouldn't call it that, but whatever. The heavy cover there. PPSA is getting equipped on conscripts. Conscripts will be able to now be a little bit more combat effective. There's still three more other squads, however, that need the upgrade, so it'll take them a little bit to get the full order. LMG over here getting engaged by both of Oh, that was a nice stun grenade there by Soldier for War. Gets those shock troops down on the ground, however, no real follow-up from that allows them to just simply get back up and get out of there. Keep in mind that stun grenade is in fact just a stun grenade. It doesn't actually deal much of any damage, so you can't use it to clear anything out. Way 
Conscripts back at base needing a lot of uh, reinforcing. And an AT gun getting produced for Soldier for War. Soldier for War has actually lost one of his uh, Grenadier squads and is currently uh, producing... Excuse me, producing a Panzer Grenadier squad to replace it. But that's about it. Shock troops over here now have an LMG, so these shock troops are actually going to be very, uh, very nasty. Jeez. And we see them going down. Well, not going down, <laughs> but uh, moving down and trying to intercept a pile squad. Pious Cloud will be taking quite a bit of damage here if it doesn't retreat. It actually needs to retreat now or it's gonna die. Shock Troops right on top of them. Flamethrower goes off on the Pious, but the Shock Troops are out in the open, meaning they don't really get increased damage taken. And down goes the entire Pious Squad, including their Flamethrower. Grenadiers moving down, trying to engage those Shock Troops. They are equipped with LMGs, but so are the Shock Troops. And on the far right hand side, we see a stun nade going off on the shock troops, only nailing one of the men. And the shock troops are going to clear out this Grenadier squad if it doesn't move out of the way. Maxim Machine Gun opens up as well. PPSA just firing, and the one man barely makes it out of there. Left hand side, the shock troops engaging at distance with the LMG, allowing them to actually duke it out on a long range uh, fight. They are staying there in the medium cover of those barrels as they push forward gonna get a nade on top of those grands there goes the nade the grands move out of the way explosions go off but the grands are fine and the shock groups are forced to retreat so tier three is up but still no tanks i don't know exactly what's going on here back at base still a lot of conscripts just sitting around not uh getting reinforced not doing much medics would also go a long way here for soldier i mean for a uh, japer to get those troops in uh, full fighting order and reduce the uh, the bleed of the manpower. It does take a little bit of an investment as it's 250 manpower, but I think it saves you a little bit more in the long run and get, unless you're going up against snipers. And even then, probably better. Panzer Grenadiers and Grenz moving up in the north, going to run into those shock troops. Uh, shock troops do have a Maxim Machine Gun behind them for support, although it's a little bit too far back. Could do with moving up a little bit more to help out the shock troops as they cap. But it is a little bit far back. There it goes. Moves up. Nice nade going down on the Grenz, or Panzer Grenz, I mean. Kills one of the men. Splash damages the rest. And the Maxim Machine Gun is set up there, shooting at maximum range, getting the Grenadiers. Grenadiers will get suppressed eventually, although they're not getting suppressed just yet. There goes the suppression on both squads. Bundle nade flying where the shock troops were, but they retreat as they were brought down to two men. And the Maxim Machine Gun forces a retreat as both squads were currently getting suppressed and eventually pinned. Back at base, still a lot of infantry not reinforced. A little bit of a... Uh, uh, I don't really like that. Uh, Jepet goes for Tier 4. Getting himself an SU-85. SU-85 will come in, you know, in a nice time here, considering that a Panzer IV is currently on the field for Soldier for War. We'll be able to deal with that, potentially, although it could get killed. But look at all this infantry back here at base that is not currently getting reinforced. We see a lot of reinforcing going down on all the troops at the same time. But, yeah, I mean, it's going to take them quite a while. Too much infantry, I suppose. Second shock troop squad could have been uh, not called in. And the AT gun as well. I mean, the AT gun is not currently being utilized, but it's fine. Not, you know, pro players here, so don't worry. Left hand side, Grand Squad, only thing that is currently on the field for anybody. Well, I shouldn't say anybody, there is that Maxim Machine Gun over here. But yeah, uh, Soldier of War has a Grand Squad going for the cap on the left hand side. All the troops for the Soviet player are back at base, not doing anything, getting slowly reinforced one at a time. Four squads are currently at full strength, and they could be out on the field, but they're not. Panzer IV now leading the charge over to the right-hand side, so that it can actually break that Maxim Machine Gun. Two Panzer Grenadiers on the field for Soldier for War, and three Grenadier squads moving together with this Grand Squad down south. Unopposed, being able to move down over here. And all the troops for Japan are still sitting back at base, having a little bit of a confab here, making sure that everybody's fine. 
how the parents doing, did you get a note from your wife, you know, all that kind of stuff. Maxim Machine Gun on the right hand side notices that their bullets are not able to penetrate the armor of a tank and they retreat. Panzer IV tries to give chase a little bit, doing a little bit of splash damage, but they're quite fine. And still nothing moving out. Nothing. Not a thing. Okay. Brent deciding to, well, another bit, no, nobody's out on the field. Might as well start setting up a bunker. And they're going to try to cover this point, although it is looking at a weird angle. Not exactly sure why he set it up like that. But finally, we see troops moving out, and those are the shock troops on the left-hand side as the conscripts move in force with an AT gun over to the right-hand side to meet the threat of the Panzer IV. It took a little bit of a downtime here to uh, settle, but oh well. Grenadiers decide to jump into the bunker that they build to try to stand against the uh, shock troops. The shock troops get themselves behind the uh, bunker. And the Gurens are opening up as they pass. A nade inside the bunker, I believe, can be thrown and should clear out that uh, Grenadier squad. But the Gren inside is just getting annihilated by the uh, PPS Ages, and down it goes. Up in the north, conscripts push forward all in mass against the Gurens and the Panzer IV. The SU-85 and AT gun a little bit further back. The SU-85 opens up on the Panzer IV. Panzer IV takes a shot. One conscript squad down to two men. Second squad down to two men as well. In the center, squads are just getting annihilated back and forth. SU-85's and AT gun manages to take out the Panzer IV. And the conscript squad does go down for Japir as the last squad at four men decides to retreat. SU-85 just taking shots at the infantry as it can. And all the German infantry retreat as they notice their Panzer IV has lost or has died. And the Grand Squad on this side also died as well. SU-85 could be used in this fight to just simply move over here. Artillery Barrage was being utilized... I think he actually called that in afterwards, but oh well. Artillery strike uh, from the AT gun into the uh, victory point there, just to deny anybody capping it. But yeah, the SU-85 will move over to the left-hand side at the very least, take out that bunker, making it a little bit less annoying for uh, Japer. And he moves his shock troops, who have suffered a little bit of losses, two and two and one. Could split them up and set one over here, but no, he wants to make sure that that point is captured. And still no medics. Still no medics. Medics would be really good here, but especially with the amount of time that these uh, conscripts are left at the base at full strength, uh, yeah, they could do with some healing. Anyways, SU-76 getting called into the field for uh, Japer. Nice little compliment there to his SU-85 and artillery. Katusha would also work great, and it's actually a little bit more, not preferable, but more prevalent. We uh, see it being utilized a little bit more. I do like the SU-76, though. It is capable of dealing with uh, multiple threats as as far as, uh, you know, vehicles go. So it can deal with some light vehicles and support the uh, tank fights with some, you know, shots here or there. But, um, but yeah, the Katusha is just simply artillery, and this does have its artillery barrage. SU-76 could actually utilize its artillery barrage right now, and it will. There goes the shot. Oh, fantastic shot there from the SU-76. Nails. Oh, a second shot kills off a Grenadier squad. Killing more from, oh, actually, it was the Panzer Grenadier squad. Nice! And gets more kills on the uh, the Grenadiers themselves. SU-76, however, makes itself a prime target here for the Panzer IV. Panzer IV moves in, takes a shot, down to half health. Second shot from the Panzer IV will finish off the SU-76. SU-76 tries to run away, but a shot goes off. Damages its engine, or, well, destroys the engine. The shock troops are unable to support here, and down goes... No, the gun goes down. A little 5% bug here. Smoke getting popped by the Panzer IV. Panzer IV is... Is he actually... Ooh, that is quite unfortunate here for Soldier for War. He's actually going to leave the SU-76 alive. SU-76 is crawling. Literally crawling, although... For a tank with a destroyed engine, it's actually moving rather fast, I should say. That is one fast tank. Anyways, it is moving back and will get some repairs by the combat engineer. So very lucky there for the Japper that he did not lose that. Gets himself another SU-76. But the ability of that barrage is just amazing. You can you saw the effect there. Eight kills in just one barrage. Almost getting it veteran C1. And uh, yeah, that was very nice. Far on the right hand side, we see all the troops here for Japper moving out again. Onto the field. Just setting up across the river. Not wanting to split up apparently. 
And uh, yeah, just capturing points one point at a time. Left hand side approach, completely vacant. We see the shock troops back at base, fully reinforced, not moving out. And we could do with some medics here to at least, you know, nothing is getting produced here. Get medics in the heal up, but nope. Okay. SU-76, SU-85 moving over to the left hand side. Conscripts running one at a time into the troops for Soldier for War. Soldier for War getting artillery by the AT gun, forcing his troops to back off. The AT gun will not be able to hit anything else as they have already moved. And the uh, LMGs are doing quite a bit of damage. We have a Maxim machine gun over here on the far right hand side. And the Panzer IV is currently Veteran C2 up in the north. Not veteran C because of its own accord. Remember, elite troops are selected for Soldier for War, so he is able to give veteran C. The Maxim Machine Gun catches that current spot out in the open. The Conscript's gonna throw a Molotov right on top of it, although there is a man right on top of the Molotov. Down to one man on the retreat. Gonna make it out, however. Panzer Grenadiers and Grenadiers will make sure of that as this squad is forced to retreat. And the Maxim Machine Gun is all that is left on this side, stopping the advance. It's not even set up to stop the advance. It sets itself up in the heavy cover of that car. And opens up through the car, getting the uh, Panzer Grenadiers suppressed. Artillery barrage right on top of the Panzer Grenadiers. Grenadiers, in fact. Taking down one of them. Maxim Machine Gun forced to retreat as a nasty barrage there by the... Uh, the... The... Uh, uh, Panzer Shrex, uh, explode the car that they were using cover for, and there it goes. SU-85 and Panzer IV set up, I mean, SU-85 set up with the AT gun to take on the Panzer IV. Panzer IV moves up, takes a shot, and decides to just get itself bombarded. SU-85 in hot pursuit. SU-76 also there for support, taking shots from the side armor, and down goes the Panzer IV. Did anybody actually here get the kill? Yeah! SU-76 got the kill right there. Very nice. So like I said, I mean, it's nice that they can actually support on that against medium tanks. They can't really do much against heavy tanks. I mean, like a Tiger, they're not gonna pretty much ever penetrate it. But against, you know, me medium tanks like a Panzer IV or Panzer, uh, the Stug or the, uh, the Flak Panzer, they can actually support and deal damage. They can't take damage, so, you know, you can't use them as your mainline tanks, but, you know, they can add to the damage the tanks take. So, yeah. As long as you have that SU-85 around, it's going to be nice. Conscripts on the right-hand side, just sitting around in the river, admiring the water. Left-hand side, shock troops going across the river finally for some cap. Shock troops on the left-hand side, getting some uh, cover on, some heavy cover there. SU-76, a little bit exposed here to the Shreks. Shreks go off, hitting the SU-76. A Faust could also be going off, but the uh, SU-76 are... On the other side of the river, a barrage here by these guys would not go amiss. The, the uh, standard shot from the SU-76 is not the best against uh, infantry. It is essentially just the same as, you know, say an SU-85 shooting at infantry. Yeah, it'll kill things eventually, but it's not designed for that. So if you want to use, uh, use it against infantry, the artillery barrage is your friend, as you saw early on, where it massacred a uh, bunch of squads over here. Back at base, Soldier for War decides to get himself two pack guns to uh, have extra defense there and not get killed by the tanks. But all the uh, forces are back up in the north. Conscripts still sitting around in the river. We see a conscript squad going for the fuel. That's two more conscript squads just sit around over here. SU-85 not getting repaired. AT gun still covering the SU-85 a little bit too close. Maxim machine gun moving out there. And we still have no medics. What is it? SU-76 getting repaired by the combat engineers. Uh, shock group squad not getting reinforced. And we have a shock group squad across the river going for the cap on that munitions as a SU-76 defends the zone and will be able to provide some indirect fire. There are pack guns in the zone, however, so that SU-76 is not really in an easy position. Artillery barrage does go off. Top of the Grenz. The Grenz actually missed there. A nice rifle nade on top of the shock troops manages to nail them. And we see a uh, IL-2 strafing run right on top of the Grenz. This is the uh, 
the one that roams, if I'm not mistaken. So this zone is essentially locked down right now for uh, Japer, and Soldier of War has not actually noticed that. He is allowing the uh, troops to move even further. SU-76 getting barraged at by Shrex, gonna need to get this, uh, get itself out of there. Second SU-76 move into support. IL-2 Thermovic attack right on top of the Panzer Grenadiers, kills off two of them, forces the retreat. And the uh, IL-2 is gonna retreat off of the field now. Yeah, it looks like it turns itself around and is now gonna head off of the field. Or is it? No, it's still circling around. There you go. No. Oh. Comes around for another pass and annihilates a Grand Squad. Down goes a Grand Squad with its own LMG for uh, for Soldier for War, and the IL-2 is now out of there. <laughs> Jeez. So yeah, I mean, it's to be expected that that uh, vehicle does that. More SU-85s getting called onto the field for Japan. I suppose at this point it is nice of him to be getting this, considering that um, Soldier for War can call it the Tiger Race. Uh, not at any point, he does need uh, 800 manpower. It's 500 short of that, but um, but yeah, Tiger Race, no longer the juggernaut it once was, but it's still a big threat. And those uh, SU-85s and even the SU-76 will help out in taking it out. So I suppose we can agree on that, but... Until that happens, um, well, these SU-85s really don't have much else to do. There's a Panzer IV on the field, and they can kill that, but Panzer IV is all the way back at base. Left-hand size. Left-hand size. What was that? Left-hand left hand side. Uh, Pios decapping some uh, strategic points. SU-76 shooting at them, but not actually managing to hit them. Because, like I said, the uh, main shot is not designed against infantry, so it doesn't kill infantry. At least not effectively. Conscripts just spattered around, not going aggressively trying to cap, trying to poke and prod. Still sitting in the river. Maxim machine gun also set up over here on the right hand side. We hear some shots. Ooh. Another IL-2 strafing run right on top of those Panzer Grenadiers. Panzer Grenadiers end up dropping a Shrek, and a conscript squad picks it up. Gets shot in return by a Panzer IV, down to two men, forces a retreat. But they will actually have that Shrek now, which is going to be bad news for Soldier for War. That means an additional thing that can actually shoot at his Tiger Race once it comes out. He is up to 600 manpower now, so I'm pretty sure he's saving for that specifically. And the shock troops over on the left-hand side just run down. You see the strafing run coming down. Uh, nothing really. Oh wait. No, it actually did. Wow. Yeah. Looks like the Grand Squad moved back out, and now it dropped another Panzer Shrek. Got in, and it ended up getting killed by the uh, IL-2. Oh well. Shock troops on the r on the left hand side going for the victory point and going for the cap over here as well. We have uh, pack guns and Panzer IVs around here. SU-76 throwing a barrage at the pack gun, trying to clear it out. Can it actually land the shots? One shot hits one of the guys. Shots scattering around, not managing to do much. The shock troops... Ooh, a nice shot! Clears out that pack gun. And the uh, shock troops are forced to retreat, however. Second shock troop squad could be moved in to relieve them and give sight range to the SU-76. Allowing them to potentially fight against the uh, Panzer IV. G43s flying off on those Panzer Grenadiers. The shock troops are still behind the SU-76, not doing much. And the uh, SU-76 will get shot again by the Panzer IV. Almost down, not moving out of the way, so it will go down. Backs off finally, and the SU-85 moves into support. Panzer IV taking quite a bit of damage. Pops in smoke, and the SU-85 pushes forward. SU-85 managing to nail that Panzer IV across the smoke. One more shot should finish it. Misses that shot. Shots continue to fly and miss, and the Panzer IV moves out of the way. SU-85 does have the ability to, you know, sight range, but it looks like it barely makes it out of there. 
Pack gun getting recruited there by an entire Grand squad, was that? I'm not exactly sure what that was, but the SC-85 is forced to back off. And the 76 has the ability to barrage once again. And there goes the barrage. It is going on to the pack on the right hand side. The pack continues to shoot at the Panzer, I mean at the uh, the shock troops. Nice rifle nade by the Grants. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh, I don't know what the hell that was in my throat. <coughs> Anyways, uh, something happened and things retreated. So yeah, the shock troops make it out of there. We see a uh, Grand Squad retreating and the pack gun over here getting decrewed once again as the other one manages to back off out of the old zone. Uh, because of an IL-2 strafing run. Okay. This guy should be far enough away. Yeah. The IL-2 is just shooting around here. Hitting stuff, but there's nothing to hit. Far right hand side, we still have troops just uh, sprinkled around all the place for Japer. The... Uh, SU-85 is across the river, AT gun as well, center point, conscripts going for the uh, victory point in the center, victory points are 202 for Japet and 331 for Soldier for War, and we have shock troops capping, combat engineers, combat engineering, and Soldier for War is... Uh, about to hit 500 manpower as he has had to use his manpower to uh, to reinforce and also he produces another Panzer IV so he wants to have a little bit more on the field considering that fuel income becomes zero essentially not a bad choice he's also going for tier 4 instead so mm, he's not too keen on getting the uh, Tiger race at least maybe not yet maybe he's trying to hold off and get a panther out of tier 4 and then go for the tiger race? Maybe. Might be a thing. Grenadiers uh, pushing into the center. Conscript squad forced to retreat. Panzer 4 there for support. All the tanks are over on the far left hand side. And up in the north, a Panzer 4 running into the conscripts that have no support as the AT gun is across the river and the SU 85 as well. So they are just sitting there duking it out with a tank as the tank shoots them and kills them because, well, they're conscripts. Do have everything final. We have medics back at base for Japan, so at least he will get his troops back in full fighting strength. And the Panzer IV moves into the center. We have shock troops and combat engineers all clumped up together. This is not a good idea. One nicely placed shot should actually kill a huge amount of troops. Shot goes off and actually kills two of the uh, friends. Artillery barrage is right on top of where the Panzer IV is. A nice shot goes off there from the SU-85. Damages the engine of the Panzer IV. SU-85 trying to pursue. Pyos getting a Shrek as they picked it up up in the north. But they uh, aren't really proficient with it. So they can't do much. Panzer IV trying to get out of the way. Manages to get out of the way. And the SU-85 just turns its nose down in sadness. Grenadiers getting an executed up in the north as they just run into the arc of fire of a Maxim machine gun. There is a Panzer IV there for support, but it didn't really support. And the Grants in the center are going to try to stop the shock groups as they try to go for the point. Panzer IV also trying to back off the SU-85 crossing the river very slowly. But it does have shock troops there for support. The Tiger Ace is finally called in for soldier for war, even though he builds uh, Tier Four. And the SU-85 is in a little bit of a bad spot as the Tiger Rays now opens up on it. And this uh, SU-85 is unsupported. It's going to try to take out that... Uh, oh, very nice lucky there for uh, Japer. The Akuru got shocked on the SU-85, but it manages to get out one last shot before it dies. Well, before it got stunned and kills off the Panzer IV. Breaks the stun, shoots back at the Tiger Rays, but the Tiger Rays eliminates the SU-85. And the SU-76 get the hell out of there. So the Tiger Ray is now essentially the mainstay for Japer, so not really anything unheard of. Other SU-85 decides to back itself up all the way back to base. Panzer, I mean not Panzer, uh, Tiger Ray is moving into the center. We see an IL-2 uh, strike being called in on top of the Tiger Ray. Not exactly sure why it would do that. The Tiger Ray is not really going to take much damage from that plane. It actually blitzkrieg to get itself out of there. The uh, IL-2 does fall on top of it. Pretty much missing almost all its shots, but even if it hadn't, 
There's a Tiger Wraith, it's not actually really going to take much damage from that. Medium Armor does take some damage from the IL-2, but even then it's not significant. So, Panzer IV, barreling straight into the base, it looks like. Not exactly sure what it's trying to do. It looks like Soldier for War may be trying to close the game just by killing off the base. The Panzer IV just runs straight in, SU-85 shoots it, supported there by the uh, SU-76, and it goes down. And the Tiger Ace now sits at range and is going to try to pillage and burn Japanese space. SU-85 opening up. It is making a mistake as it runs straight into the S the the, bleh, the Tiger Ace. SU-85s, however, are now masked by the smoke of the Tiger Ace. And the SU-76 are in front. Blitzkrieg getting hit on that Tiger Ace. Shots fly off from the SU-85. The uh, Tiger Ace makes it out of there and I guess it decides to rethink. It's a strategy. Turns itself around, facing its rear armor to the enemy. Never a good idea, but it's now running to a point that it's not able to capture, but I guess it's fine. Shock troops pushing forward. The Tiger Ray still around here. It's going to try to cross the river, it looks like. Gets a little bit slow down in the water. Shots fly off at the SU. I mean, at the... Uh, at the shock troops, uh, the SU-85s are nearby and could help out. Tiger Ace is still trying to get itself out of there, but it manages to keep on shooting as it moves around. And a barrage goes off from an SU-76 trying to nail the Grenadiers, but it's a little bit too far off to uh, spread out and won't really hit anything. Up in the north, still more conscripts just peppered around, not being used to cap or attack or anything. And yeah, just sitting in this point, not even capturing this point. Look at them, they're so close, but not even going for the cap on that. Pack gun set up across the road, just to make sure that the SU-85s don't try to chase down that uh, Tiger Ace. Shock troops being used to cap. Shock troops just sitting there pretty. Victory points, 202 for Japir, 141 for Soldier for War. And the conscripts up in the north run into some Pyos with a Shrek. As they are going to run straight again into a Maxim machine gun that has been there for quite a while. And just end up getting itself killed. The Pyo ends up retreating. The IL-2 attack comes in and forces the Grenadier squad to retreat. And the Pyo gets eliminated by the Shock Troops. Not Shock Troops. Conscripts. Which might as well be Shock Troops considering they have three PPS ages. Ha ha. <laughs> Anyways, Grant's in the center for Soldier for War, go for the cap. The shock troops push forward and cap over here. Fuel on the left-hand side, gonna get capped again by shock troops. And back at base, combat engineers just sitting around. Shock troops run into the Tiger Ace, getting shot at. Two shots, two kills. Three shots, three kills. They're just getting eliminated. Oh, and yeah, those uh, shock troops need to get themselves out of there. SU-76 shooting some barrages across the river. We have the SU-85s a little bit further back, so this SU-76 will get killed off, as it's not even getting canceled on there. Engine does get destroyed. The uh, Tiger Ace continues to tank it and take some shots. Finishes off the SU-76 and backs off. Taking about 40% damage, so it's still alive. The SU-85s needed to be a little bit further up to support and get more damage off of there, but that's fine. Bunker in the center getting produced for Soldier for War. He wants to lock down that victory point, although he only has one himself. Down to 109 points, so maybe this game will go for victory points rather than kills of any type. Panzer IV with its armored skirts that failed them. IL-2 runs into the... Uh, Grenadiers as they move across, getting them suppressed. Not really getting any kills, although it looks like damage might have been done. That's about it. Grenadiers in the center going, well not center, going on the left hand side. Uh, victory point, the shock troops running right on top of them, gonna clear them out. There they go. Tiger Race moves up and gets some kills on the shock troops. The SU-85s are not where they need, sorry, not where they need to be. Uh, the SU-76, SU-85 moves over here to clear out the bunker, and it will be able to clear it out quite easily. 
SC-85 and SC-76 doing quite a bit of damage here to this uh, Tiger Race. Tiger Race forced to back off now down to about 25% health at best. Shock Troops getting shot at by the Tiger Race. A little bit damaged there. And on the right hand side we still have all the infantry just sitting around there. There's also, uh, you could build uh, sandbags if you want to entrench into better positions rather than just, you know, leaving there in the open. But, um, yeah. That's that. So anyways, uh, pack gun in the center, not managing to protect the bunker as the uh, SU-85 outranged the uh, the pack gun since it was also behind the bunker. So SU-85 clears out the bunker in the center and moves out. We see an IL-2 getting called in into the center point. Not exactly sure where it's getting called in, but not being able to do much as there are no infantry or troops on the field. Told you for war really only has a grand squad and that's it. And he says, I can't stand when a Russian player does nothing but play victory points. There's no skill anymore. Well, to be fair, Jeppet has this game in the bag for a long while, considering the sheer amount of troops that he has on the field, and Soldier for War now has nothing. He does have that, uh, I have no assault tanks. Tranks, eh? Hey. Uh, hey. Anyways, conscripts push across the river. Finally, for the first time, they run into the Tiger Race and instantly retreat. Uh, shock troops being used to cap, and Japanese says that he can just, he can just defend. Not really. There are more uh, options available, but it is a uh, strategy he's using. IL-2 comes in, throws a little bit of a burst on the Tiger Race, doing a bit of splash damage to those Grins. Not imagining to do quite a bit, though. SU-85 push forward, and we now have both of them falling right on top of that Tiger Race. Tiger Race taking some shots. SU-85 in the lead is quite damaged. The, con the uh, combat engineer is trying to repair it on the fly. SU-85 getting stunned. Shot goes off from the Tiger Race and manages to miss. And the Tiger Race just keeps getting shot at. IL-2 right on top of the Tiger Race. Almost clears out the Grenz down to one man. SU-85 goes down, and the Tiger Race is still alive. SU-85 in the back managing to get some damage going off on it. Tiger Race pops some smoke, but gets itself in front of the smoke, revealing itself, and down goes the Tiger Race for Soldier for War, losing his really only thing uh, he do. He says he can't stand noobs, so I guess it's kind of hard to look in the mirror. But, well, points are down to 22. Means that uh, Japan will be able to finish off this uh, game rather quickly, but uh, Soldier for War decides to call it quits and just leave the game. So yeah, not the highest skill here, but um, yeah, not I suppose an enjoyable game. And thanks uh, to Japper for sending it in. Uh, so once again, if uh, you have any games you want to send, go ahead and send them to the email that I will put in the description. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.